Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. I guess wherever you're coming from today, uh, welcome to another episode of Exploring 3D Experience Works. Uh, my name is John Martirano, and joined with me is Gian Khaleesi, and together we host Exploring 3D Experience Works. So what is this session? Well, we've had seven of them so far this year. So if you joined uh, you know, with us, we, we thank you for joining and we hope you continue to join in the future. But for those who are brand new, you might be wondering what is 3D Experience Works? Well, 3D Experience Works is a growing portfolio of tools that are handpicked by SOLIDWORKS to tackle just about any product development challenge that you face. So this that you see on screen is 3D Experience Works. So what does this product development uh, process look like? So in its you know, simplest form, it's plan, develop, and release. And you can see that uh, if you're you know, SolidWorks users, and as many of you are, I'm very familiar with that second developing um, phase of the process. And if you joined us in 2020, then you know we cover actually all of these in great detail and the rest you can see is actually they, they sprinkle in quite nicely uh, for this overall product development phase and today we'll actually get a special look at all three of these and basically this big holistic approach to product development challenges that you may face and to help us think product versus cad file we have a special guest today lisa costa I'd like to welcome lisa hello good thank you for having me <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. No, this is not, no, no. I yeah, yeah I, I I was a special guest last year during the webinars. Yeah, we had tons of fun then. And you know, one one of the benefits about you know not being in the webinar format anymore that I did forget to mention is that you know we can actually communicate with the audience live. So there is a chat in the YouTube uh you know, box. So if you have any questions or you just want to say, hey, or, uh, you know, what's up, we'll, we'll be chatting with you throughout the session. Sure. I've been kicking around a long time. I think we've established this. So, so I've been, I've been around product development. I mean, I'm a mechanical engineer uh, that started out in product development and aerospace industry, worked for Pratt and Whitney Aircraft, and I've worked in machine design for Sylvania, making the machines that make the light bulbs. But I've been involved in CAD software or some the very beginning, and then also what we use the CAD files for, which is developing product in the case of you know, Pratt & Whitney. But then here in the channel, I've been helping a lot of customers with a ton of different products. But the one thing about working for SolidWorks, working for a reseller and partner products is we interact with customers doing cool things with our software all the time. And, and they make cool products and they use our tools all the time to do that. So it's very exciting. Great. Yeah, and sorry for those of you who couldn't just hear me now. Didn't realize I was double muted, and <laughs> it was only a matter of time before one of us was. But I was just asking Lisa to tell us a little <laughs> bit more about her background. Uh, but thank you for telling us that, Lisa. Oh, yeah, I wasn't just offering it. <laughs> 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 I would. It's okay. <laughs> Unprompted. <laughs> Dreaded double mute. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's happened to everyone at least once now, but oh, exactly. It's the year of the, the double mute. I think. <laughs> the year, yeah, it's the year of the double mute. Yeah. Oh. Well, Lisa, so we're today we're going to be talking about how to think more product, you know, thinking beyond just CAD files. So exactly. Yep, yeah. Yep. Like. So yeah. So that yep that that's what I prepared to talk about. <laughs> So, so basically, you know, thinking product versus CAD files is what we call this session, right? So it's it's not a versus, by the way. It's it's not like we're not managing the CAD files. So, you know, if we think about our SolidWorks users that are on, you know, the yellow brick road to developing a product, you know, when that, you know, I call this assemblies, parts, and drawings. Oh my! I mean, so we we know SolidWorks as a tool has always been great at developing products, but the the end result is typically files, right? 
and you know we ended up with assemblies, parts, and drawings. Oh my! And <laughs> and you know these are a piece of the picture of getting down that road to developing a product, right? And so, absolutely, we one of the bar none one of the best tools in the industry for developing product and creating these files which contain that product, you know, much of that product definition for assemblies, parts, and drawings, right? But we're going to think beyond that of, you know, people that aren't SOLIDWORKS users or how our SOLIDWORKS data kind of feeds a, a system of development, product development, to get product ultimately made and in the hands of consumers and things like that, right? Right. So you're talking about bill of materials? Well, some people think it's about bill of materials. If we think about a bill of material, we kind of, uh, in the, you know, we've established I've been around for a long time. So one of our running jokes is when is a bomb and a drawing out of date? Uh, like maybe week if somebody or changes, or makes a change. As soon as you hit print, uh -oh. really. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, or, or save the PDF, which is uh, the modern equivalent <laughs> of printing, right? So, yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, so, I mean, by the way, we make, you know, one of the claim to fame SOLIDWORKS, we make a great bomb in the field of the drawing and I get it, but I've gone on customer visits, you know, back when those things used to happen where, you know, uh, where I, they said, oh, we run around the shop floor every morning because they're using SOLIDWORKS. They're using a digital tool and storing the files digitally somewhere, but allow users to print, you know, and they said every morning we go out to the shop and we destroy all the drawings that are out there because we have no idea if it's out of date. So we want to make sure they print it again. Wow. Right. So this was years ago. But I mean, it's the same thing. Right. And then, you know, you might be saying, well, what about a watermark? Yeah. You know, so we, that's why we yeah. get a lot of requests to put a watermark. And again, my, <laughs> what does a watermark prove? How out of date it is? I mean, it's really, <laughs> you know, if you, if you have a, a digital definition of your product, you know, a, the bomb is just one piece. And again, uh, when we talk about a product, it might be more than just what was modeled in SOLIDWORKS, right? You know, if, you, if you're talking about something that's got mechanical, electrical, software, right. it, it, there's, and if they're not using SOLIDWORKS, then, you know, this is not, may not be the full picture of everything that we have, right? I see. Okay. So we're, t so we're thinking beyond just, just the CAD and mechanical, so, electrical yep. software, which most, I think most products these days have some element yeah. of one or the other, right? Yeah, there's a smart everything, I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, there are smart windows now that you know, the shades drop and it's sunny out. I mean, almost <laughs> everything that used to be just mechanical is now got these other aspects. And I get there are still mechanical. And like I said, if you are a design house, the SOLIDWORKS files might be your deliverable, right? right? That, that That's totally possible that, that we have design houses and stuff that uh, they are a piece of the product development and they're doing it for at the behest or the requirements of somebody else. And, and sometimes the files are the deliverable. And by the way, we manage the files very well on the 3D experience platform, but we're going to talk here about kind of the shortfalls just real quick of the bomb. Even if you, even if the bomb is what you think the end product is, we still have the aspect for a multidisciplinary company that everybody's got their different tools, right? They might be using SOLIDWORKS electrical. They might be using Altium, you know, uh, software people might be using GitHub. You know, we, SOLIDWORKS is probably the tool of most of the people tuning in today. And everybody develops their own parts and their own product structure within their tools. And then at some point they have to come together, right? And then we have some kind of meeting where we decide what the product looks like. Because as I've said before, nobody goes to Best Buy and buys the mechanical, the electrical, and the software, and we expect them to put it together themselves. So we all come to an agreement of how these things come together, right? So it's it, this is the you know the, the e bomb is typically what people would call this the engineering bomb. We decide that's the product that we want to make, right? So we get that bomb, and we're very proud of ourselves. And maybe it exists in a system. Sometimes it's an Excel spreadsheet. You know, <laughs> it could be. <laughs> but then there comes the other role. So this would be part of that you know plan, develop, and release that John was talking about, right? But then. What is the point of releasing the bomb is to actually get it made. So then we have our friends in manufacturing and they might be internal to our group or we might have external manufacturers, but there comes a point where that bomb goes to somebody else. And it might be a different system or maybe a different Excel spreadsheet. And the reason why you saw it multiplies because we might manufacture our product in more than one place. So now you're talking about levels of so you've got one engineering bomb, but then we make it differently. There's different processes, different machines that make it in one location than another. 
And then we have different purchasing challenges, right? And right now, I think everybody's got purchasing challenges, actually. But, um, you know, so when you, the way we source the parts, who we buy from, what we make versus what we buy might change when we manufactured in China versus when we manufactured in North Carolina, right? So a lot of people, the manufacturing bomb, it's called an M bomb, and then purchasing often adds. So again, these may not be it may not be on the field of a drawing, like our assembly, like we saw with the uh, the drawing with a bomb, but they're typically in other systems. They might still be, you know, uh, Excel or something, but no matter what, even if they are a different software tool, they're disconnected. And they also, this is, you, you introduce, everybody is managing their own version of that bill of material. And then what happens? A change. A change now. <laughs> Right. Now this got to be a better got, way. <laughs> there has to be. Don't you say to yourself, God, there's got to be a better way. And, <laughs> and by the way, I know, for, I mean, from all of our talking to customers, that manually entering that bomb information into another system is real. People do it every day. And then it just has to, now you have to manually go make sure everybody has the latest and greatest information. So what we're proposing with the 3D Experience platform is to have a place where it's a holistic approach for a digital continuity, right? So what if, what if we had a world, you know, where somebody had Ruby slippers and we could, <laughs> which fits in with the red of the SOLIDWORKS files actually, but if we could all be feeding our engineering definition, which includes the SOLIDWORKS files, right? As well as the structure, right? The product structure that we develop, you know, with the parametric solid modeler, plus the, the electrical, plus the software. What if we could all feed it into that a system where this stuff could come together and now we have product information where people are kind of just adding their pieces of the puzzle to it and then our compatriots in manufacturing and, and um, uh, purchasing procurement can add their information to the product data without having to make more files. There might be files associated with it and they can associate those files also. So what's important to me in manufacturing and me in purchasing, the way I look at that product might be different than my friends in engineering. But this gives us one place where everybody can go to find out what that latest and greatest snapshot of what our product looks like, right? Either in its current uh, condition that we sell it in or you know what's upcoming. So we're we're you know when we release a product and then we're going to make the next um, generation of that product. You know we reuse things and we make changes, but we also are going to have to still manufacture and source. So there's this. It's not so like Lisa, we just have. If we had one bomb, that'd be easy to manage, right? right? <laughs> so so if I got this right, um, basically if I'm a manager, for example, I don't actually need to get into the CAD to get access to all the information I need. So it's specific yeah. to who needs it, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, and it's who, and then we'll see the, the way that we sell it through roles, right? So you're right. Anybody that needs access, now they don't need access to CAD files. They get access to the 3D Experience platform, and they're going to be able to view that data um, any through the roles and the apps that make sense, right? Oh. And 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 if everybody can be using the same data, and actually there's there's something in it for the SolidWorks users they may not realize, which is that if the files are a part of the definition, you know we can have people adding things to it without modifying our files. There's nothing worse than a manufacturing guy opening up a SolidWorks file <laughs> or, or gal opening up a SOLIDWORKS file and doing what they need for manufacturing and actually changing the file, right? You know, designers don't want that. They want to do their design and then have people add to it without modifying the files. But if we could get to this holistic approach, which we do have with the 3D Experience platform, our users can get here. You know, they will have more agility as a company. You know, people can have confidence in the data because we don't have those disconnected right. systems. Everybody knows they're looking at the latest and greatest and also the quality will be improved, right? So this is what the 3D Experience platform brings to the table when we use that system for managing the product data, which is the SOLIDWORKS files and more. I see. I see. Okay. That makes sense. Um, just want to give a quick shout out to some of our folks watching in the chat. Hey, Karima. Hey, Logan. And uh, CADCAM 100. Yeah, we salute you too, as does Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I, we appreciate that. Um, but speaking for our audience i i'm kind of i'm curious as to what this actually looks like in in practice you know in what does it look like sure. in the 3d experience platform 
Sure. And for our solid yeah. shoes. So what does this look like for this, this bubble on the left in the red, right? So what does what does the SolidWorks user's experience look like with the 3D experience platform? So what does it look like? What a good <laughs> question. Um, so I took a simple example, right? So this it, it's going to look like uh, any of our other tools for managing the SolidWorks data, right? So right inside of my tool, this is a very simple, as we just got, I'm a simple woman. I like a simple example. It's a an assembly called can, it's got a lid and it's got the body of the can. Film canister. That's what it looks there you like. Go. <laughs> you, you don't really remember those, do you? No. <laughs> you know, never used one, the, but. The photo map kiosks in the mall parking lot where you drop off your film. <laughs> Anyway, but this, this is what it looks like for the SOLIDWORKS user. To them, it, they're managing their data. They're going to put that SOLIDWORKS assembly into the platform by using the save commands. And again, we have a, um, a playlist for users uh, that they'll be able to go to, to to see more realistic what it looks like for different users and stuff um, in a playlist in the demo. But I just wanted to show it's it's no magic. It's not particularly, it's not rocket science. You know, it looks to me like an assembly with two components, and that's what I deal with. I'm a SolidWorks user. This is what I made. I put it into the platform. I can see what revision it's at, what state it's at, and that I've got that's all up to date. So same thing as we get with our PDM Pro. Uh, actually, going back all the way to those that remember PDM Works when I was around for that as well. Still that same feedback, so our users know exactly how their files um, compare to what's available to the rest of the company, right? Now. Once it lands on the platform, now you can access it through a browser and you will be able to see that that can. You'll be able to find that can and you'll be able to see that can. But behind the scenes, what has happened by putting those SOLIDWORKS files onto the platform, what you got for free without <laughs> basically as part of the system is that yes, there's a CAD assembly and the two CAD components as well as a drawing, okay? But it defined a physical product, something called a physical product and the physical product for the assembly, and then a physical product for the, the lid and the body. Now, if we were in the business of making multiple cans with different sizes, we may have had configurations in that assembly, and what it would have done is it would have made, and you, you decide if it's a configuration that is really a def, different product, a different part, or if it was just something for visualization, but once you say, yes, this is a configuration that should actually be its own physical product, you could actually, that one CAD file, that one CAD assembly could have made, you know, 20 different physical products, right, at the assembly level and 40 different physical products at the part level, right? Because this is going to give us that ability for configurations inside of SOLIDWORKS files to equate to actual products that we make and sell, right? Instead of it being stuffed inside the SOLIDWORKS file inaccessible to other software products, right? Right. That makes sense. Does that make sense? I think okay. so. This this uh, this image you're showing though is still still a little scary. I still see some things that I'm not quite sure. Like this 3D shape stuff. Oh. I, I think that that I've used the tools that that touch on that a little bit, and it's not really something yeah. that you have to be concerned with very much. But it yeah. has its uses, no. right? Yeah. Oh yeah, Th yeah. That's how other roles that need the physical, like what the actual shape is, the geometry like our simulation of roles or uh, the NC roles, right? So, and keep in mind, they need to know the geometry, but they don't need to get access to the SOLIDWORKS files, right? right? So this is how we, and again, I don't want to scare anybody with this display. This was just to, to kind of blow it out, to show people what you're getting and how the system has these different item types made so that when those other roles interact, they're going to, they will interact with the correct type of item without having to interact with the SOLIDWORKS files, right? And, and that's all good, right? The SOLIDWORKS files are safe, stored, managed, and they are linked to the right product that's going to be made. And if we just break it down real quick as far as descriptions. So when we put SOLIDWORKS from, you know, SOLIDWORKS desktop into the platform, you know, we can have a CAD family object that's a single SOLIDWORKS part or assembly, but it could create multiple physical parts if there are configurations, right? And then the physical products are actually items or parts. You know, not to be confused with files or CAD files. So it's not the actual files, but it's it's what the file defines, right? The part. And if you think about it in terms of our desktop products, you would have to get to the level of manage to get, you know, you'd have to have PDM Pro plus manage to get to a point of having uh, something that's considered an item or a part with, with the files related to it, right? Um, and get those different views of the bomb and things. But 
the 3D shapes, like we said, you very rarely interact with the 3D shapes. So the good news for our SOLIDWORKS users is they'll search for a physical product, the can, find it. And when they drag and drop that physical product into a SOLIDWORKS session, it's going to go get the CAD files for them and all the relationships and the things that they need. So all, of, all the expectations of the CAD files and knowing what to get and what else is related is built into that connector that puts the stuff onto the platform. I see. So, so Lisa, um, I think you just, I think you explained it pretty well, but we did just get a question in the chat wondering what actually is the difference between the CAD family and the physical product. Could you articulate that a little bit more? So, yeah. So, and actually, I think we have a good example toward the end. I think we're going to answer that at more toward the end, but it basically means that the SOLIDWORKS files are the SOLIDWORKS files, right? But when you put them onto the platform, there's there's a physical product. So when we go talk about manufacturing the physical product or the physical product being part of a bill of material or a product structure, it's not just the file, right? So if it, so, let's, a simple example, that top assembly, there's two things associated with it, right? So to, to, to get the, if, when I look up that CAN assembly, I want to find both the CAD the assembly and the, the drawing, right? right? There's two files that define that, not just one. So it's not a one-to-one. -one. It can be one-to-many, or in the case of one CAD file defining like multiple sizes of CANs, it can have one CAD family and three different physical parts. So I see. like I said, if you looked in this, yeah, if you looked in the system and found the, the one half inch CAN and put it into your, you know, you're going to get the same CAD files if I look up the, you know, two inch CAN and drag it into. So it's a one to many relationship or many to one. I see. You know, so both. that's why it's, yeah. I hope that's not, I hope that's not more confusing. No, I, mean, I think it makes sense. It's, it's, it's kind of appropriately sense, yeah. named as like the family, you know, this is the family of, yeah. of design data attached to a product, but that might be multiple exactly. products. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And those products could yes. be based right. on configurations, different configurations in SOLIDWORKS. Okay. And keep in mind, when we get to the full product definition, there also might be that same part might have some electrical components too. So that same assembly, like if it was an electrified can, which I don't think we have, but um, a <laughs> smart can. Um, <laughs> you ate beans today. Um, <laughs> that, you, know, you would have the electrical definition be there too. So, you know, and, and going way back to when I, when I worked in machine design at Sylvania, we used to have philosophical conversations about you know, what is the difference between the part and the drawing or the part and the, the solid, the solid works, I mean, the, the data file, uh, you know, it, and it was just hysterical. You know, we used to, you know, we, well, you know, when you got, you know, if it's got a D, it's the drawing. If you don't have that, it's a, and it was just, like I said, it was, it was ridiculous. I, and then I used to always go, uh, like the, the numbering and I would just go, oh, this is not making any sense at all. Why do these guys think this way? Cause it's cause we're all thinking, files right we're thinking about files not the actual part I mean, and that's the important part nobody nobody sent the drawing files down to the plant to for, as the machine oh this is this is what we made for the machine to make that light bulb no you're going to send an actual machine <laughs> so i mean it's like that's just one piece of the definition of getting that thing out the right. door right so and this is really it's it's not like it and i think it has a huge benefits which so I'm going to expand on this a little more. So that's a super simple example. What the SOLIDWORKS user sees, it looks like assemblies and parts and drawing. Oh my. <laughs> and then what the system does with it is kind of flesh it out more so that it can be used by downstream roles and people who aren't SOLIDWORKS users, but still add more information to that product definition, right? right. So think about manufacturing, purchasing, yeah. like we talked simulation. about before, but even simulation. Right. Um, you know, visualization, right? They need to use that data, but you don't, but you as a SOLIDWORKS user really don't want them mucking around in your files, which is what this gives you, the ability to kind of have people be able to add to it without um, messing up your stuff, right? So I, I always consider it saving me time, right? So if somebody can get to my SOLIDWORKS, if they can get to the product definition, my piece of it, without me having to generate screenshots or things like that, they can do their own thing with the data and not actually have to have a seat of SOLIDWORKS or mess around in my files at all. Right, right. 
right okay well lisa i'm seeing i'm seeing um another image on screen i i think we're going to need to explain a little bit but but before oh, yeah. that yeah. we did so, we did just why. get a question just yeah. wondering how uh how yeah. our our audience could get notified when uh webinars or live streams like this are held and they're actually held every thursday this year uh from 11 a.m eastern standard time uh usually they're about an hour or so uh but that if you ever go to the SOLIDWORKS YouTube channel, you'll see the next one is always right there, ready to go if you're interested in, in checking it out. Uh, but sorry, sorry for that interruption, Lisa. Let's. Oh, no, listen, advertising your next sessions, I'm all about <laughs> it. <You've> got... <laughs> a happy audience, you know, happy John, happy, happy Gian makes a happy Lisa. So <laughs> you want butts and seats. Um, yeah, so yeah, every Thursday, you guys don't have this on your calendar marked down for every Thursday at 11? Oh, I'm shocked. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Just plop it in there. You'll re you'll remember, and then you'll always remember. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. If um, there are any more questions, no. Yeah. Let's let's talk started. about this uh, this structure here. I see. Oh, yeah. I see the uh, another physical product that it looks like there's maybe some changes attached to it. Exactly. So again, you don't have to. I mean, we have hassle-free data management. If 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 the reason you may you just want to manage SOLIDWORKS files, you know, because you're making product and you just want revision control, lifecycle control, we can do all that with the hassle-free data management. It's still going to use the 3D experience platform, but you just wouldn't, you don't have to use it all. It's almost like it's 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 capabilities that are available. But if you get to the point where you want to add more to the SOLIDWORKS, the, the product definition than just the SOLIDWORKS files, and maybe some of that is things like a specification document. So this would be an example of a PDF that should go every, people should know that PDF goes along with that sprinkler every time, because this is a specification that we used when defining that sprinkler, but it's not something that goes out in the box, like a user document, right? So it's not part of the bond, but it's part of, of what we use to define that product. So that's possible. You can start to add other things to the physical product that aren't SOLIDWORKS files, and maybe aren't even part of that, what we would call a bomb either, but it is part of the product definition of when we want to go back in time and we need to make the next version of our orbital sprinkler, we'll always know what that specification was. And then on the left, and again, I use the relationship viewer. So this is an app on the platform to be able to look at a prod, look at any item type and then see the other items related to it. And so just to show an example of how the platform can go further, so we have the ability just with the basic roles when you get, when, when they buy any of our design roles, right? Like sculptor, creator, uh, here we're talking about the connector with this is data that came from SolidWorks and the uh, collaborative designer for SolidWorks. Uh, when we get that design data onto the platform, you know, there can be things that happen like somebody does a markup, right? Maybe, maybe we found out that, you know, maybe it wasn't that kid friendly, somebody stubbed their toe or maybe it was too pointy and somebody you know, stabbed somebody's foot, which I, I guess that would be a bad example. <laughs> Scratch that. Um, <laughs> rewind. Um, yeah, anyway, they stubbed their toe. And it was, so we want to make a kid-friendly version. Like we're going to modify this sprinkler to be more kid-friendly. It could start up with somebody marking it up of where the issue was, right? And then somebody makes something called an issue out of it. So we have an issue. Our sprinkler has been you know, flagged by the consumer products as being not kid-friendly. <laughs> so we make a markup. Then we raise an issue. And then at some point, that issue, maybe it's an issue that we address with a change. So we're going to make a new revision based on making it kid friendly. We're going to use that markup and the description of the issue to come up with a newer version, maybe revision at, uh, E of the orbital sprinkler that's going to be kid friendly, right? So those are all those are all doable. Yep. So Lisa, without going off topic here, we did get a, a comment um, about somebody being curious to see how e-bomb management works in the in the platform environment so oh, you know exactly. again if you're going to get to it later in your presentation i am can, yes can do it's that the next then, slide. So. oh like no way people, okay. it's like these people have seen this presentation <laughs> i love you people. anyway so yeah so this is this is one and again this is the relationship you are you may never look at your product like this right it probably be that you use another role to look at that right so this is that same orbital sprinkler but seen using a role called product release engineer. So this is a role that looks like, what does it look like on the left? The person that asked the question? It looks, it looks like, like a, an e -bomb. 
Exactly. But you can see here, it's, it's not, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, you can, very timely, isn't it? It's got a PDF here. It's also got everything that came from SolidWorks, but then it's also got physical products that were never modeled in SolidWorks. Maybe it's the packaging, like we were talking, the box, the, um, you know, other parts that, that need to define that sprinkler that we sell, right? right? Um, all of that can be there. And here you can see, instead of seeing the relationships kind of in that, people sometimes want to traverse the relationships in that graphical viewer, but this is the way they would actually show up. So those relationships are important because this app knows to show the change. So nobody's going to look at this orbital sprinkler and not know that it's the result of a change. And that's the change. So these are those same things that we just saw in the relationship viewer, but just seeing them here in the context of a role that's utilizing that data. So again, this is, you know, this, this isn't, you don't have to use this role, but this is a role that if you think about true bond management, this allows you to look at that product structure flattened or with quantities. Like right now I'm looking at it, I've got um, revisions. But you know, I'm not seeing quantities, so it's just the it's just saying these are the parts. But if I want to see quantities, I can see it with quantities. If I want to see it flattened out with instances, if you had 25 bolts, you can actually see it with 25 bolts, all instances laid out. So this is truly an e e bomb in that we depending on how I think about that product, right? Right. Yeah. And it's not just static on a drawing, right? It it actually can be viewed and then used by other roles. So this would be. This product structure would be used by downstream roles like our uh, manufacturing item uh, engineer, right? MFN. Yes. That manufacturing? That you get. Yeah. So it, it, it can make that M bomb without modifying this. It transforms it into a manufacturing bomb. I can reorder these things the way it's actually put together, not the way somebody designed it, right? Right. That makes sense. Okay. So, Lisa, I mean, this is this does look a little familiar. I'm just wondering, is this is this a new concept or? Oh, so. Uh, taking the system and having a system that manages the files yeah. and the product data. Right. Actually, I looked this up <laughs> just for this question. Okay. So no, I did. I mean, I, like I said, we've, we've established, I've been around for a very long time and, uh, but I did, I did a search on the internet and found, actually I found a blog post from 2015. And the reason I like this blog post is because uh, it's a, somebody calling, I think he calls himself the flying Dutchman. You can yeah. find this. It's a quote about, the, the quote in his blog was, the CAD structure does not represent the e bomb right? So if as the electrical person, I think that my PCB with the related you know, components and things like that is the product, but the mechanical thinks that the SOLIDWORKS assembly and the parts is the, way, is the product, but ultimately it's not. This is, so this, if you think about our construct of, of how the 3D experience is keeping track of the product data, there is a physical product that we're gonna sell right? That's defined by both the mechanical, right? It's got the parts that are defined by mechanical right. and some of them are also electrical. And then the electrical is related to some software that ultimately has some documents, right? So all of this comes together, but basically when I as a consumer buy that product, I expect to get all the things that make that product, not just the SolidWorks drawings, assemblies, and parts. Oh my, right? So it's it's not a new concept. And, and if you think about it, so logically, um, as we are as engineers, you know, what's great for our SOLIDWORKS users is when our tool of choice SOLIDWORKS finds that part, it will find the SOLIDWORKS assembly and it knows to go get all the component parts, the drawing and things like that. So this is not a new concept, but this is our this is us going beyond just files, right? So our other tools have been very file focused, you know, Workgroup PDM, um, Enterprise PDM, PDM Pro, PDM Standard, very file focused, but this is us being more product and acknowledging that SOLIDWORKS files are part of your product definition as customers of SOLIDWORKS. And you have more things you need to do with that data than just keep track of files, right? Right, that makes sense. It, and so from a big picture perspective, how does how do you as a SolidWorks user know that this is important? That this is uh, that, that that this three D experience platform is bringing to you more product definition, and it and it is more about than just the CAD files. It is more about just the CAD files. So just taking some topics that I just randomly selected. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> yes, you know, so people, oh, well, people talk about traceability. They'll and oftentimes they think traceability is who modified that file though. So it's 
So knowing that Gian changed the CAD file, you know, on July 22nd at 1139, you know, that's traceability. But, you know, in the, in the world of product development, and like I said, when, when that unkid friendly orbital sprinkler was used, <laughs> right. Do they, do they care that Gian modified the file? No, they want to know why it was designed that way. They want real traceability, right. which if you think about those other items, like, like change actions, like issues, markups, and who? Yeah, who told, who told me? You? Yeah, yes. who told me to do it? Why yeah. did change? Yes, <laughs> why did it change the CAD file? So that's real traceability, and that's what you can have with the platform. You don't have to. Again, it can just be about the you know the, the SolidWorks files and revs and and whether it's in work or release and all of that's part of it. But if you wanted to go beyond that, you can have real traceability. Um, and, you know, and not just for engineering, but for the manufacturing and purchasing, like we talked about at the beginning. Right. And then, like, I've already alluded to this, but what, what our customers usually sell to their customers is a product. They develop product with our tools. We, we make a great tool, SolidWorks, and, and all the SolidWorks and everything in the 3D experience portfolio is great for developing product. And we know that you don't take your SolidWorks data and just, you know, give it to a customer. You ultimately have to give it to manufacturing or somebody to make it and things like that. So all the information. So we're just coming up with a system that can manage all the information that defines that product, not just the SolidWorks files, right? So actually, it, Lisa, yeah. um, Steve Fick from Behind Scenes says hi. And uh, he actually says, can the product structure on uh, EBOM consist of multiple CAD systems? Absolutely. Yeah. So again, it, it would be great if everybody only bought SolidWorks and it was all about SolidWorks files. But that can actually, so in, I know we just talked like mechanical, electrical software, but if your company uses Inventor and they also use SolidWorks, sorry, was I not supposed to mention it? Anyway, well, uh, CAD, CAD system A, CAD system A and us, right? You can actually bring those structures together so that you can actually traverse the product structure in total and actually have those viewable files of more than just SolidWorks data. So yeah, it, it could be more than one electrical system, more than one mechanical um, more than one software, and they can still come together. It still understands the structure, and it's those tools will still, when they connect, will get the right, bring you back the right data to use with your tool, right? Makes right. sense. And you know, one more for you because we're having yep. so much fun here. Uh, can the EBOM widget in the platform uh, be used to manage financial and procurement aspects of my product, like part cost, total cost, supplier, et cetera? Um, it's not really so. There will be roles to do that, but today, you know, we don't, you know, so those would be like the Delmia Works roles. It would bring more of the ERP type functionality to it, the cost and things. You can still use properties for cost and everything, but what we, what we don't have today is that it doesn't do that roll up, you know, so if you put a cost in all the parts, it's not going to automatically update the cost of the assembly, but you could output it to a CSV file and do that kind of stuff or, or, or output it to your MRP tool and start to get those abilities to roll those up. So Yes, we can keep track of that, um, and we can even with a, there's some roles for linking to enterprise tools. If that cost actually exists in another system, there are ways to bring that in. Um, so that does exist to be able to do that, but it, it might require more roles than just that connector for SolidWorks. That, that well, there are left. some ways to customize the properties that are shown too. Yeah, yeah right. configure. Yep, you yeah. configure them. It doesn't yeah. require code. You don't have to write for the connecting to other systems requires code. Don't get me wrong, but the other when we add like that product release engineer role, we, it just automatically works with our SolidWorks data. We don't need to, and if we're using SolidWorks custom properties, you know, we would configure the system. And so they will show up in that EBOM and come, if they're coming from the SolidWorks files, that's all part of the system. It's all built in. Yep. Excellent. All right. And so I think I've interrupted you enough. <laughs> okay, so. that's all right. You can interrupt me anytime, right? Uh, but and then the other thing is, I said, so, you know, I used to joke with our salespeople when we drive up to a customer, you know, and they bought 10 seats of SolidWorks from us, but there's 100 cars in the parking lot. You know, that to me says there's more than just SolidWorks users that get a product out the door. I mean, granted, some might be HR and stuff like that, but there are people that do product development that aren't necessarily SolidWorks right. users. So we offer roles, like we saw the product release engineer role is for people who aren't in SolidWorks every day, but do need to see the e-bomb, right? And then even for the large company, not every person, you know, we would love it if every person in design used SolidWorks, but as we talked about with they're using other tools or they, they're just, they, they're at that more looking at product structure type person and don't get into the actual files and, you know, all of them can be supported with this. And we always have this conversation. 
it, it would be a great world if there were only SOLIDWORKS files for our users to manage on a day-to-day -day basis, but there are usually more than just SOLIDWORKS files that they need to do their jobs and manage product data. And if you, in your head, think of you know an Excel spreadsheet managing all your issues or an Excel spreadsheet for the bomb, if you've got all this stuff going on, this is a system that you can be brought together and actually have real connections to the things that we make so that you can see it in a big picture perspective and, and be able to do a where use, not give, be able to see that there's five issues raised against that orbital sprinkler and maybe we need to address those. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that. Right. Yeah, that, that makes sense to me. Um, I am just wondering, do you have do you have any examples that you could show us of, of like how this has worked for, for somebody out there in the field? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have a ton of customers using it. We, you know, at World, we had customers talking about using the 3D Experience platform, certainly using a cloud-based cloud -based management, product data management is what people are looking for. A lot of customers today, as opposed to keeping track of their own servers and being in charge of the backups and the updates. So I did bring an example of one of these customers, which you may have seen if you've ever looked at some of our demo materials. BioDapt is a customer. They develop prosthetics, very advanced prosthetics. Uh, so they had a challenge, which is a very common challenge we hear from our customers, being able to accelerate product development, right? Including industrial design, right? So they also use some of our roles for the advanced surfacing on the on the platform. But they wanted to eliminate repetitive tasks and inputting the same information in multiple places, be more flexible, making changes, right? And streamlining communication of design concepts, which we know they use SolidWorks for those design concepts, but there's other people, other processes, right? So they use the browser-based solution of the 3D Experience platform, but integrated to that SolidWorks CAD software that everybody knows and loves, right? And they did have real results. Notice none of the results were made SolidWorks files faster than ever, because you know pretty much SolidWorks is fast. It's the fastest tool out there for making data, but it's about cutting down design time, you know, product development time, and improving communications and being able to innovate faster because you have a tool. Again, if you if you're a SolidWorks user and much of your day is spent doing like tasks that aren't inside, you know, that are kind of you know the the bookkeeping of being an engineer, you know, like the 3D Experience platform is purpose built as a place for people to manage product development processes so that you can eliminate some of these repetitive tasks and having to do things over and over again, right? right. Okay. And we do have a quote. From um, from Mark McCauley, right about you know they used it that they can it's an integrated design environment in the cloud and they see it as represent the future of product development right because of the flexibility and the freedom to work and be more efficient right so if we think back to parts drawings and assemblies oh my so Mark <laughs> McCauley and our friends at BioDapt and a lot of other customers have reached you know the Emerald City. <laughs> And they have their SolidWorks files as one piece of the definition of the city. It's not all of the citizens. It's just <laughs> some part <laughs> of what we do to have our you know, ideal environment, right? So hopefully everybody will go down the yellow brick road with us <laughs> on the uh, 3D Spirit platform. Yeah. Follow the yellow brick yeah. road. And make it to the end, to <laughs> the oh, glory of to the yeah, getting that product out on the market in record time. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yep. And, and like I said, you when you do more of these sessions, whenever people are seeing our roles in the 3D Experience Works portfolio, they're all using the underpinnings of this this unified product definition, right? right? This digital definition to do their pieces of the puzzle. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So even though we haven't maybe spoken or articulated quite explicitly the concept that we went over today of the digital um, product definition, it's it has been just like you said, Lisa. It's it's been the underlying it's, baseline functionality on top of which all the other products we've shown uh, sit. You know, they sit right on top of, yeah. of that backbone. That's right. You got to have a foundation. For the <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, you do. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Lisa. Maybe we can. Oh, no. Thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, maybe Thank we can you. get you back on again before the end of the year. We'll see. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. It's always my pleasure. <laughs> well, thanks again. And if you're interested in learning more about this digital product definition, 
Um, just showing you, you can look down to the, the links in the description on the on the YouTube listing itself. And the, the first link is actually going to be to a playlist that has a few videos that another colleague of ours, uh, Brad Williamson, made a few videos and put them in a playlist to kind of show you getting more into the nitty gritty of how it would work and how it would look and feel to an everyday user that might be either a manager or a designer or engineer. And as always, special thanks to Sarah Zuckerman always helping us out and Steve Vick helping us on the back end today. It was a pleasure having you both working with us and making sure that this stream went smoothly. And if you liked what you saw today, come back, join us again on August 19th, again at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and this is kind of like a perfect precursor into that next session because today we talked all about that digital product definition the real baseline uh, concepts that the, that the platform is really based on. And next time we're gonna have Andrew Gross, another special guest come on and show us how revision management works in the 3D experience platform. So how you can iterate and revise your designs and, and you know how and when to use the different types of revisions that there might be in there uh, and really some best practices. So we're excited to have him join. And like we said earlier in the session, just wanna throw out there, we do, do, we do hold these live streams every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time so that even though this is our next session for exploring 3D Experience Works, we have a SolidWorks live design next week, same time on Thursday with Toby Schnars going over his pro tips for surface modeling. So if you like surface modeling, you're not going to want to miss that one. And I think everybody here knows Toby Schnars, Too Tall Toby. So definitely not going to want to miss that one. But thanks again, everyone, for joining, and we can't wait to see you next time.